Hey guys, it's Brian and welcome back to Firebird Fridays. Today, we're making a list of what it's gonna take to take the Firebird for just a drive around the block by the end of the year. That's kind of the goal, just to jump in it, fire it up, be able to back it out of the driveway, take it around the block, and then pull it back in so we can do more work. Just, just to have something to kind of bring this crazy year together and everything. So uh, I uh, took some paper I had laying around and made a list of everything we need to do in order just to drive it around the block. And again, this is not to daily driver, but just enough to get it to where we can take that one little initial drive before we really start to tear into stuff and systems. So uh, let's dig in and let's find out what's on this list. All right, well, first things first, we're gonna have to rebuild that carb. It uh, needs the linkage, it, it needs the bowls redone, it needs all the new gaskets. So I've ordered a set uh, rebuild kit coming. It should be here soon, so we'll make a video on that. Next thing we're gonna do is the installation of the power steering system. Now you notice in a video, and I'll link it up here, where we pulled off the power steering box and we're gonna rebuild it. And uh, hopefully we'll get to that today in this video. Um, so we need to get that done and a new pump put on as well. Next, we need to uh, fix the outer tie rods. If you remember in the very first video, which I will also link to the very first video when we picked up the 67 Firebird, the power steering was locked up, so we couldn't even move the wheel. So we had to break loose those outer tie rods in order to move our wheels to get the Firebird up onto the trailer. So we need to get those fixed. Now, we're not going to completely put new tie rods on, just reattach them with new bolts and hopefully get that going. Now, if we need to replace those, then we will. So next on our list is to hook up the fuel tank line. Remember, in the beginning, we were running a uh, container of fuel in a uh, pickle jar in order to get the car running. We eventually want to get gas in the gas tank out back. And so we want to make sure that fuel line is good, make sure that gas tank is clean. There's nothing in it. So we'll have to clean up that gas tank. Second thing is uh, the seats don't have any sliders or any rails. We're just sitting right on the uh, sheet metal. So we're going to have to find ourselves some either used or brand new seat sliders for that so we can at least be safe while driving it around the block. Next is to uh, fix the rusted brake lines. When we were pulling the tie rod ends in that first video, we noticed that both front brake lines, the rubber lines, were rotted out. And so we need to get two new lines. Hopefully those are cheap, should be for a GM car. The drum brake, so we'll get two new of those. We'll put those on. That'll probably be our next video after that. Next part is checking the transmission. Make sure there's fluid in it. Make sure that it's a decent color. Just kind of go through, make sure things hooked up for that. Um, and then the last thing we're gonna do is check the rear differential. Make sure there's fluid in the rear diff. So that way, well, at least we have brake fluid, we have transmission fluid, we have engine oil, we have everything. All the fluids are topped off and ready to go before we take this Firebird for its initial run around the block before we really start tearing into it. So first things first, um, since we've already got the power steering gearbox out of the car, let's go try and get that rebuilt on this episode. All right, so got the power steering gearbox off the Firebird, having it in our pan, just kind of looking at it. It is nasty after sitting for 25 plus years. I did clean up the best I could, you know, took some gas to it, uh, wire brushed it a little bit, tried to get it together. So first thing we're going to do is take off these four bolts that hold the, um, where the idle arm comes down and attaches to it. So those simply come off. I believe they were um, half inch bolts to pull that off. That is, our first step is to get that out to see how bad this box is. So take a soft hammer and tap that out. Make sure the uh, steering box is lined up centered, otherwise it will not come out. Luckily, mine froze um, in the center position, so here it comes. Let's get this sucker out real quick and see what she looks like. It just simply pulls out, get it out of there. Look at the junk and just the garbage that was stuck in that box um, for so long. It must have had a broken line, that water just seeped into it over the years. Um, overall, it looked good. It, there's no damage to it. It's just, that looked just gross. Looking inside, um, again, look at the gunk inside this thing. It, it's dirt and water um, and debris. So I'm not 100% sure what happened. 
prior to me getting my hands on my brother's car, um, but definitely needs some attention. Otherwise, there's no warrant. I don't see anything broken. I don't see anything, any score marks, nothing on the star power steering pump um, driveline. There doesn't look out of place. So digging back more into it, I guess we continue to uh, tear into it. Next, we need to take out the worm drive. And as you can see in the background, I have several of, of those tools that will grab hold of it and pull this off. But unfortunately, I didn't have anything that fit correctly. So I used a pair of uh, needle nose pliers. Finally got the dang thing off. And uh, go ahead and just show you what I had to encounter here. And it came apart. And that's supposed to all come out as one unit uh, with the, the worm gear on it. And it wouldn't budge. It just would not move. It would, I could not turn it. And remember, if you remember the first video, we couldn't move the steering wheel, so we had to disconnect the um, tie rods in order to move the wheels in order to get the uh, Firebird up on the trailer. Everything I tried, it just would not move. It, it, this thing has just completely frozen up inside of itself, and unfortunately, it means just buying a new box. So I figured, well, we've come this far. We know we're going to need a new box. So I thought I would see if I can't hammer it out and negatory just it wouldn't move nothing so i just kind of threw my hands up well so much for uh rebuilding that power steering and gearbox it's going to be best just to go ahead and uh, use it as a core and get us a fresh one and put it in here and get a new pump as well new lines so i guess next we should probably turn our attention to the uh front brakes, at least the brake lines on this car, and uh, let me show what those things look like. So, well, that's what they should look like, but um, yeah, and who knows, these could be the original 1967 brake lines, um, completely gone. So we're going to get in there and I'll show you how to take them off and uh, how to put the new ones on. And while we're in there, we'll do a little bit of inspection on the uh, drums. This car has drums all the way around, which probably won't stay that way for too long. Once I get everything up and running, I'll probably convert to disc, uh, at least to the front, maybe maybe all the way around. You know, my 67 Porsche um, has disc all the way around. I really like having the disc on it, but, you know, we'll see. But at least get front disc on this thing. So uh, let's find ourselves some new brake hoses and, um, get these repaired and while we're in there we'll go ahead and inspect the rest of the uh, brake shoes and brake drums and see how they're looking before we get started so uh let's get to doing that all right so first thing i want to do is put in some penetrating oil on where the hose is attached to the uh, drum or to the slave cylinder or the cylinder i should say uh, and then where it attaches to the hard line there on the frame so 16 millimeter is uh, what it took to get that off and uh, tight clearances. I'm not a fan of where they put the uh, bleeder screw and how this hose attaches to the uh, front wheel. Uh, yeah, not a big fan. And then over here, this is how the rubber hose attaches to the hard line. And I just didn't have a flared uh, wrench um, small enough in order to attack that. Um, again, I'm still working with all metric tools. Hopefully Santa Claus will bring me a set of new SA uh, standard tools. So I did what able with the vice grip to get in there and get that off. And so there we go. Borrowed that from the neighbor. I was just tired. I didn't want to mess it up any more than I had to. Because one thing I do not want to do is have to redo all the brake lines. Which I'm thinking I'm going to have to eventually at some point. <laughs> so off this comes little by little. And uh, we'll get this going. And we'll get that new hose on there. I'm thinking those must be the original brake hoses from 1967. The way they looked. And both sides completely broken half by the time we're done. So we'll lift this up and we'll disengage it. We'll take off that uh, small little half inch bolt that uh, holds the bracket to the frame. And uh, we'll get to putting on new, brand new rubber hoses for our 67 Firebird project here. Well, I figured since we were here, might as well go ahead and, and pop off this uh, dust cap and take a look at the wheel bearings for the front hubs. And little by little, you just work it off. Like I said, little by little, we just work it off. It's been on there for a while. So, plenty of grease inside. It looked fresh, looked good grease. 
I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm assuming that my brother had done this 25 years ago in hopes of driving the car, and then life happened, and it just, it sat. So it has probably zero miles on that grease. I was just amazed at how clean the grease was and how fresh it was appearing. Go ahead and uh, pull that cotter pin out for us real quick here, and we can take off that, that uh, big axle nut and get it out. All right, and she should come out now, and a little bit of effort, there she is. And always replace that cotter pin with a new one. All right, now, kind of just wanted to look it over real quick before I pulled that nut off, give it a couple taps, kind of loosen up. Uh, one of the things I, I dislike about drum brakes is how after they've been sitting for a while, they will tend to rust into place. So it feels good. I feel like there's a little bit of uh, movement and play. We should be good. So grab the uh, socket and my uh, cordless impact that the wifey got me for Father's Day. And we pulled that nut right off. And now we can pull the hub completely off. Make sure to grab that outer wheel bearing and uh, washer. There we go. And again, I was just amazed at how fresh the, the grease looked on the bearing. It was, it was like, wow. This had to be repacked and put in, and again, it, the car just sat. It didn't have any mileage on it, apparently. So, taking the hub off, slowly but surely, to kind of take a look at our uh, brakes and our shoes and our springs, and eventually I got it off of there. And plenty of thickness on the pads for me. Um, I haven't had a chance to look up the uh, specs on what the uh, thickness should be for those, but we will. And simply got in there with some brake cleaner and just cleaned things off to kind of assess what was going on. And uh, look around a little bit. And here comes the puppy. And of course, uh, yeah, trying to keep her away from, from this nasty brake cleaner. But inspecting it, and it, it, it looks good. There, I didn't see any real issue. I checked for any scoring on the um, axle hub right there. It's nice and smooth. No gouging, no anything. So I'm pretty confident that the front wheel bearings and everything else will be fine. Turning our attention to the back, though, that's a different story. So there's no axle nut to take off to get the hub off the back. So did my normal thing, just pound on it a little bit and try to move it, and it would not move. It, it just... It took me forever, pounding and pounding and pounding on this thing. Um, came from the back side, hit it from the front, hit it from the side. It was probably a good 15 to 20 minutes of just little by little, you know, eighth of an inch here, sixteenth of an inch of, of movement. And eventually, um, you know, effort and a, probably a beer or two, finally got this thing off. And you can see it, it had just sat and had rusted itself onto that back hub um, and the parking brake could have been on which I went to release the parking brake but the parking brake um, handle is missing and um, I'm not even sure the parking brake um, is even engaged inside the car so that'll be something we have to figure out down the road as well but here we go we finally get that thing off we can inspect it and see what she looks like in there well, everything looked all right, and I'm trying to spin those turn if I have a positive rear end or not, and I'm like, wait a minute, this thing is supposed to be in park, and I should not be able to turn this uh, hub this way. So I need to uh, spend some more time on the transmission, but that'll be for another day. So again, just clean it up. Again, the pad thickness, the shoes, um, still had plenty of meat on them. Um, I'm eventually probably going to have to get in there and just replace all those springs, replace those wheel cylinders, and get all that uh, back to uh, normal. So I guess let's uh, get back to the front. Let's get those new brake lines put in. So you can see the new line. It's not quite as long as the old line, but uh, hopefully that won't cause a problem in our uh, turning radius when it comes time to uh, drive this car. So let's, uh, let's get the new one in and see how she looks real quick here. All right, so here is on the brake side of the, the wheel side. We're going to take the hose and twist it on or screw it into the hole there. And again, that was a 16 millimeter um, head on that. We'll get in there. It was tough to film and get it in there, but we did get it screwed in. Next is the brake line where it attaches to the frame and where it attaches into the hard line. 
And I didn't sink this, I didn't screw it down all the way just because those other bolts you see there is where the strain box goes on the other side of the frame. So I simply just screwed it in enough to where it will hold it up. That way I could get the uh, hard line attached to it. And then I can eventually, when it comes time to get that new power uh, steering gearbox, I can install it without too much effort and too much fuss. So we got that into place. All right, guys, moment of truth. Let's see uh, how much play we have in these hoses. And it looks like there's it's tight, but it's not putting a bind or anything on the uh, new brake hoses. And again, right now I don't have the tie rods connected to the uh, hubs and spindles, so they have full movement and full play. And again, it's tight, but I still had wiggle room. There was no tension on the brake line, so I, I, think, I think we're good. Those are going to work out for us. And speaking of which, I guess now we need to uh, get some nuts on some tie rods. And I really tore these tie rods up trying to get them off in that field or that back side of the house there in Oklahoma a couple months ago. You can see the um, uh, tie strip right there. We had to attach it. But threads are kind of messed up, so I'm going to see if I can't use uh, some hardware that I found around my house. I, where the original castle nuts went, who knows, probably still laying on the ground back in Oklahoma, but we'll get these popped into place and I can at least get a uh, nut on it to hold it in place for us to take that drive here very soon. Got that done, found an old castle nut for one end, and then I found just a normal nut for the uh, other side of the car. So that can be now checked off our list. All right, guys, I know it's not all the way down. We're not going to put a cotter pin in this. It'll hold. It, it, it'll hold for, what, two, 300 miles tops, <laughs> at least around the block. Well, let's turn our attention. Let's get some fluid into the uh, reservoir here for the power brakes. And, man, if this thing was completely bone dry, which you would expect for a car that's been sitting for 25 years with broken uh, rubber brake hoses, nasty junk down in there. So went ahead and just blew it out with my uh, air compressor, Cleaned it out, kind of took a rag down in there and wiped up anything I could. And uh, just went over to the shelf and uh, grabbed some DOT3 brake fluid to pour in there. Kind of get that filled up. And uh, I think, you know, we'll just uh, get the little wife to come out and uh, sit in the old Firebird and do the um, manual pumping of the brake pedal while I uh, start to do the brake bleeding on the car. But... I think I'm going to need a beer before I uh, get to the next part of this job because taking those uh, hubs off was a pain in the ass. Hi guys, I think I've had about as much fun as I can for tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up now. And since we have the uh, fluid inside the reservoir in the master cylinder, we're going to leave it there. And next week we'll pick up with bleeding the brakes, the front and the back brakes on the Firebird. So let's go to our list. Let's check off what we can check off. And let's uh, end this video for this week. All right. Let's go do this. All right, let's see here. What can we do? All right, we fixed those tie rods, so got that done. Not yet, not yet. Busted, we did that. And, okay, we have two things checked off the list. So next week, let's go ahead and we'll bleed the brakes. And I think we should either uh, rebuild that carb or install that new power steering uh, system that we have. Heck, we might even get to the fuel tank and uh, get the uh, seat slider things. If you guys have a set of used seat sliders for both the front, uh, left and right passenger and driver for a 67, 68, 69 Firebird Camaro that you want to sell me, will you hit me up with a link down below so I can take care of that and buy those from you? And check the transmission. I think I can get all this done well, maybe in two more videos. One on the carb, one on the power steering, and maybe one finishing up the rest of this. All right, guys, thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you next Friday for another episode of Firebird Fridays.